And we are at 942 subs. Another 124. You know, it really tickles my fancy seeing all you lovely people actually enjoying my silly stuff. I never knew this would actually be a thing, but here we are. It won't be much longer now until I have... <laughs> um, I mean, hi. Hi is what I meant. Right? Um. Good evening. Hey, how's it Good go morning, good afternoon, good yeah, well, night. Oh, we're already done? Uh, I'll see you guys later. All my fellow oh. flat earthers of the globe. <laughs> CC? From New York? Is that you? Who's got a new intro? Or maybe it's fucking word. Globe earthers of the flat earth. Mm. Well, the voice does sound familiar. It's not one of those guys, though. I have here today a presentation that will knock... knock your socks off. Spiffy! Wait, is this another perspective thing? This is another perspective thing, I'm sure. Get ready for the ultimate debunk of the tired old argument that ships are going over a curvature. Oh, so it's actually not a perspective thing. Although it is still one of the classics, going over the curve. And it's only tiresome if you are completely unwilling to accept any kind of evidence. But please, continue. That buildings are being chopped off at the bottom. Wait, what? Who the hell told you that? Because of the curvature of Earth. F visually, you mean, right? I hope so. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash that argument right here with a simple five minute video. All right, let's smash it. Let's see this ultimate debunk. I am getting my hopes up, so you better deliver now. Check this out. So, first of all, the number one argument that the Earth is a globe. Focus, focus. Is the thought, the belief that ships are going over the curvature and that the sun is setting over a curvature. Well, basically, yeah. Let me get this focus back in. There we go. The number one argument is that this this rock here is presenting a ship, right? So... That's one big ass ship, dude. It's like a freaking Death Star uh, 2 size compared to your curve thing. Actually, it, it might even be bigger. Also, what the hell is he using? Some kind of tube? The problem with that theory that the ships are going over a curvature... Right? Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, Bill Nye, the... The lie guy. Got him. The science guy. Ah, come on, you had him. And I'm sure Neil is actually feeling left out right now. You know, meme digress Tyson? No? Well, all right then. I mean, that looks like a ball, right? Well, not exactly. That actually looks like a huge planet-sized tube, but you in quite a high orbit around your space tube, while moving around something that is, if I had to guess here, 30 to 40 times thicker than our own bloody atmosphere? Give or take? You're telling me this means the Earth is a ball, right? Uh, no? What? What's he doing? Oh god, he's gonna say something silly, right? Well, that's kinda, kinda why we're here, but, you know, I'm an opt optimist. Well, check, check it out. The, if, an, if the Earth is a ball on a sphere, on every shape, there's, there's what we call an axis. On a flat plane, we have an X and a Y axis. Uh huh. On a sphere, we have an X and a Y axis. Well, we also kind of need a Z axis for stuff moving away from us. On both your flat plane and the globe. Keep in mind, we're working in 3D here, not 2D. So the horizon line, right here, the horizon that you see is the Y axis. Alright, globe heads? Well, no, Flurfer. That's what we call the X-axis, but for your argument's sake, I shall allow it. Not to mention that, apart from the fact that at this orbit, you will actually see a curve on your Y-axis as well. And that is going to be his entire point. <laughs> Why am I even surprised anymore? I mean... Get that in your head real quick. This is the Y-axis, and when the ships are going to and from the horizon coming to you, that is the X-axis. Uh, uh, fine. So, let me get this straight here. The z-axis is your x-axis, the x-axis is your y-axis, and you don't even have a z-axis. Should we make the y-axis your z-axis? Maybe? And why are we yelling? And with we, I mean you. It's not like there's loads more cars all of a sudden. Or is it you're really getting into it right now? So on a ball, if you have a spherical shape that's curved on all sides, you would have to positively, absolutely curve this way and curve that way. You get that? Alright, well, based on your fiddling around with your Death Star over that curve, I can maybe make a guesstimate about the size of your tube here. Here's a very rough idea of what kind of curve you will see from your current, um, orbit around your tube. And I'm sure I'm being very generous here. So, 
here's my challenge to you and my question to you why are ships disappearing at the bottom first globe heads this way only when you have other ships that are going across the y-axis like this well if you were actually on the planet instead of orbiting it you feel the field would be too narrow to see that curve well at least allow me to retort and the y-axis is flat completely flat so by your logic globe defenders if a ship is going over and disappearing this way it's only disappearing one way but if you take your camera and you pan all the way that way all the way that way you look with your own eyeballs on the beach what do you see there globe heads let me guess your fancy flat horizon all you see is flat horizon oh come on you upper dick flute i just got back for dozens if not hundreds of miles left and right yes and would that perhaps be because oh i don't know every time you turn around your field of view doesn't magically increase it stays the exact same so your field of view will always be too narrow to even see a curve well unless you go into orbit like where you're filming from right now on this scale i'm i'm sure you think what you're filming right now is representative of filming from the beach or some shit heck if that were the case the planet would indeed be no bigger than your tube you silly man. So the ships, the, the, the range of our vision is cutting off at about five miles. So if the horizon is a mere three to five miles away and you're seeing the ships leaving and going away at just five miles, guess what that means, Globe Defenders? That means your Earth is tiny. Really, mate? That would actually mean the Earth is a lot larger than it is. The bloody horizon is around 2.9 miles away on a clear day when looking at it from the beach, not 5 miles. What? Did you get confused by the 4.7 kilometers or something? How, how, how is that even possible? But that does not mean we cannot see objects beyond the horizon which are much larger than us, which are also a little bit further away than the horizon. That means the Earth is probably a quarter the size of the Earth that you say it is if the Earth is... 25,000 miles in circumference. So, do you just say things you heard others saying, or, or do you actually look into it yourself? If the Earth is 25,000 miles in circumference and the ship is going away at just 3 to 5 miles, that makes your Earth the size of the moon. Well, using your scaling, the Earth is indeed no larger than your bloody tube. And if it was the size of the moon, our horizon would be much closer, even at a mere 2.43 kilometers. Or, um, roughly one and a half miles or some shit. Which is less than half of what we see in reality on this rock we call home. Alright, you can double check that, get on AutoCAD, get whatever you want. So you just want to eyeball it. That seems useful. I mean, we all know how far away the horizon is, and there's various ways of checking it. But instead of boring my viewers with the maths, which would add another 5 minutes to this video if I were to explain it in detail, go and have a look at this video by Victor Mateas. It should pop up in the top right, and I will also link it in the description. He's got a dedicated math channel and is very good at explaining this stuff. You're going away at f and disappearing at 5 miles. Your Earth is tiny. Alright? I would even guess the Earth is not even a quarter of its size. Well, shit, mate. Could it be that you have little ball syndrome and have to downplay the size of other balls? I mean, what, what would that mean? We know the horizon is roughly 4.7 kilometers or 2.9 miles away from us. So at a quarter that size, we're looking at 1.2 kilometers and something like 0.7 miles, more or less. All right, here's your destroyer right here. Crushing your balls. <laughs> well, speaking of little ball syndrome, well done, I guess. Globe Defenders, if the Y-axis is still... That's actually the X. Oh wait, we changed it, right? You changed it. Perfectly flat, and your ships are going over the X-axis. You know what that means? Oh, oh, I know that you have absolutely no clue what you're talking about, and actually think you know what you're talking about. Something like that, along those lines, and shit. I'll tell you what it means. Ah, it's a sewer pipe, or a drainage pipe, or whatever you um, non-Dutchies want to call it. We call it Rio Leerbuis. So if you're ever in the Netherlands and want to talk about Rio Leerbuisen, um, you can now know what it is. Seems useful. Wait, what? No, I didn't mean it! Damn it! That means your Earth is a cylinder, globe, de globe defenders. Well, no, my Earth is a ball. It's only a cylinder in your twisted little world. A rather complete misconception. That's what you're defending. Don't you mean that's what you're straw manning? You're defending a cylinder earth. Or perhaps straw tube. Is that something? I don't think that's something. He just made it something. This is your earth. This is so stupid. How can someone actually come to a conclusion like this? I mean, you have to be really special for that. 
That's right. Holy shit, it's Miguel Angel. I knew the voice was familiar. That's right. Well, calm down, buddy. I only remember you from my flat is not level video when you guys ambushed me outside the castle. Silliest stuff I've ever heard. But, uh, well, you actually trumped it this time. <laughs> Miguel here with another evidence factual based. Ev evidence factual based. Evidence based fiction? That's. that's weird. Document. Document. You mean documentary? Well, I. I guess. You did document something. Documentation right here. Alright? Documentation? No, I like my word better. Alright? I want all, everybody here that's listening to this, you better open up your mind, you better open up your eyes and get it through your head. There is an X axis and a Y axis on a ball. The ball has to curve away on all sides. All sides, not just one. Well, it actually does that. That is exactly what a ball does. And what... Oh, for fuck's sake. This is another scale issue, isn't it? Why does it always boil down to that? So your, your cylinder earth theory? I totally reject it. Well, it's not exactly our theory, no, is it? It's your straw man theory? Did you just straw man your own theory and then just rejected it? Is some really confusing straw man rejection theoryception? I... I don't know. And you have been 100% debunked, and I'm gonna debunk you even further right now. Are you fucking for real? You just straw manned your way into a field of corn, and we're confused you didn't have any straw for your straw man. While looking for tubes, you made a corn man. Even your straw man is ashamed of this shit you're trying to pull. <laughs> and that made more sense than anything you said the entire bloody video. Here's the second part of the video. Ooh, I cannot wait. Another argument from the globe is that the higher you go in elevation, the more that you can see. If you're going in elevation higher on a globe, you're gonna see more. And that's exactly what happens also on your flat plane, so, you know... Well, check it out. I just told you that this is a flat cylinder, right? You just saw this, you can fact check me, you can put a measuring line on that, it's a flat cylinder. Alright, calm down there, Miguel. No one is accusing you of having a crooked cylinder. <laughs> Wait, there are some suppressed issues here, I think. <laughs> here we go. On a flat plane, and I'm not putting a camera chick here, I'm putting the lens right up to the edge, right on the right at the edge of this sucker right here. I'll even put it higher for you. My lens is higher. Can you see any of the lines that I drew all the way to the end of this cylinder? By the way, this cylinder is eight feet long. What you see in front of my camera is one foot away. Check it out. The higher you go on a flat plane, guess what happens? Guess what happens? Oh, oh, I know. You see more. That's hardly groundbreaking. Guess what happens, Globeheads? I just did, Flurfer. Oh, check that out. You can see further down the flat plane. So what the hell is your freaking point already? Wow, how you like them apples? Oh, here's another example in the background. Look at all those street lights. I'm sorry, look at all those telephone poles. Look how they get smaller at the end there. Wow. This, this guy is even more easily amused than me, which I kind of find impressive for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> and I thought he was going to debunk us even further right now or some shit. Uh. Now, I don't know about you, but just looking at stuff is not really debunking... You know? What a concept this perspective is. Yeah, well, now we're kind of talking about perspective, yeah. But perspective has nothing to do with stuff sinking behind the curve of the horizon. What are you going on about? What is he going on about? And does he even know he's like very far in orbit right now around his tubular earth? He does not know that. I know he does not know that. There you have it, folks. 100% proof that debunks the ships going over the horizon because on a flat plane due to perspective you're still gonna have the bottoms chopped off because that is how our vision works ah finally he's gonna throw one more claim into the ring because that's not how our vision or perspective works things beyond the horizon have to be literally physically lower than you or else this sinking effect won't work it won't work on your flat plane, where stuff merely shrinks to the point where you can no longer see it, or rather resolve it. Now, the mere fact the horizon actually drops in reality is proof of a globe, because on a flat plane the size of Earth, that would only start happening once you are so far up in orbit, you can see the other side of the plane. Which is exactly what you're doing right now with your tubular Earth. I simply don't understand how it is possible people cannot understand the scale involved. Especially after being told multiple times by us. And anybody that's looking from the, looking towards the horizon at ships, you're also not considering that you're five, six, six feet tall. And we're back to straw man. 
or corn man in your case. And also, d don't you dare start talking about skill right now, because you have been ignoring it the entire time. The lot of you. But as soon as it's convenient for your straw man, I mean corn man, you're gonna use it. That's... <sighs> I expect it. So you need to get that camera down on the shoreline where the water is to give an accurate, a more accurate assessment. And when you want to account for the waves in the ocean, you gotta, you gotta get that camera at least three feet off the ground to account for all the waves. And all the height values are represented in the formula. So what's the big deal? What are you going on about? Why are you actually pretending we don't care about the height where you're actually looking from when it is an inherent part of the calculations? Why am I even asking these questions? I know they will just answer with nuh uh. There you have it, folks. The higher you go on a flat plane, guess what happens? You see more on a flat plane. And no one has ever said otherwise, corn man. That is my debunk video. For it to be a debunk video, it has to debunk something. So it's not a debunk video, right? Subscribe to my channel. No, and here's why. You disappointed me. You came in here with guns blazing about debunking everything and all of a sudden we're all staring down straw man in the form of corn man. I don't even know what to say about that. Thanks for watching. Peace. And you can't even do that right. You're just like M. Benz. If you're gonna do that, you have to make this sound as well. <laughs> Apparently you don't have no idea what it is, what you're doing right now. Which is kind of fitting, actually. <laughs> your cylinder earth theory is bullshit. It's not our theory, it's your brain fart. Also, I do believe the official term is horse shit. Bullshit. No, horse shit. Really? Throwing rocks? That's kid stuff. Also, it seems he's done here. So basically, he debunked his own tubular earth and was accusing us of having that theory. I don't have words for that, other than, welcome to the Order of the Silis, Miguel Angel. I hope you enjoy your stay. <laughs> what the hell, man. Oh, oh, I've been practicing. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, and of course, hanging around. That's, that's, that's correct, right? Alright, I'll see you guys later. Bye.